In last week's market update, I was discussing the apparent absence of the bull in the S&P 500 recently following the trough of the 40-week cycle. I also pointed out that although the bull seemed to be taking a bit of a summer break, there were no distinct signs of bearishness in the market yet. However, in the last three days of last week, all of that changed. Here is the analysis that we've been looking at in the S&P 500, working with SPX data. And here is that 40-week cycle trough that I believe occurred in about the middle of August. Last week, we took a look at these semicircle lines, which of course give us a good visual reference to the way in which the cycles are influencing price. We could draw vectors, if you like, on those semicircle lines. And the important thing here is that the 18-month cycle trough which was influencing the price movement to rise between October of last year and about the middle of August this year, at the point where that cycle influence peaked, that 18-month cycle influence has now turned down because we are, of course, looking ahead to an 18-month cycle trough expected early next year. But I also pointed out in last week's video that we hadn't yet seen very much bearish activity. The bulls seem to have gone a little quiet following the 40-week cycle trough in the middle of August. But last week, as you can see, price started moving down fairly strongly. What does that mean? First of all, let's consider one of Hearst's tools, the VTL, or Valid Trendline. This is not a tool that I speak about often in these videos because it is not as reliable a tool, in my opinion, as the FLD. There are various reasons for that, but the primary reason for the fact that it is not as reliable is that it is very closely based on the analysis because a valid trendline is drawn between two consecutive troughs or two consecutive peaks if you are looking at a downward pointing valid trend line. This is of course an upward pointing valid trend line and it connects these two troughs. The fact that price crossed below the 20 week cycle valid trend line last week in fact confirms that the 40 week cycle peak has formed in the market. That carries a great deal of bearish import because if the 40 week cycle peak has formed in the market then that must be it over there, which means that we are now on our downward slope towards the 18-month cycle trough. However, I don't take the valid trend line as absolute fact. The reason for that is that it is so closely based upon the analysis. If the position of this 20-week cycle trough or indeed the position of this 40-week cycle trough is incorrect, then that valid trend line wouldn't even be there. It might still be a trend line, but it's not a valid trend line and certainly not a valid trend line of the 20 week cycle. And that is one of the big problems with the VTL, that it is very closely based upon the analysis that you have performed on your chart. And if that analysis is not absolutely correct, then the information you get from price crossing the VTL is probably also not correct. Nevertheless, price did turn down in the last few days of last week. So let's zoom in and consider what is happening. Here is the 40 week cycle trough as we have discussed previously. And here is the number of days that have elapsed since that 40-week cycle trough. There have been 38 of them. The average length of a 40-week cycle discovered by Hearst 50 years ago is 34 days. But because of the principle of variation, we know that not every wave of every cycle is exactly the same wavelength. The average wavelength will be 34 days, but the wavelengths will stretch and they will also compress. At the bottom right, and edge of the chart, you can see that recently the 40-day cycle has been calculated to beat with a wavelength of 39.8 days. Let's call that 40 days. And so we are definitely within the range of time at which we expect a 40-day cycle trough to form. Here is the nest of lows for that 40-day cycle trough. A nest of lows, of course, is composed by these circles and whiskers. Each circle represents the exact time at which the cycle trough is expected to form on the basis of the recent wavelength of that cycle. The whiskers or the lines to each side of those circles represent the reasonable range of time in which a 40-day cycle or any of the shorter cycles could be expected to form. Because of the principle of synchronicity, these circles and whiskers tend to line up vertically, as you can see over here. 
There's another example of a nest of lows for the 20-day cycle trough over here in about the middle of October. And so clearly price has moved down into this 40-day cycle trough. We are expecting it to bounce out of this 40-day cycle trough and we're expecting that quite soon. If it bounced out within two days, in other words by Wednesday, then it would have been a 40-day cycle with the same wavelength as the recent wavelength of that 40-day cycle as calculated over the past six waves of that 40-day cycle. Another reason why we would expect that 40-day cycle trough to occur within about 40 days of the 40-week cycle trough is by measuring the number of bars that elapsed to this 20-day cycle trough, which is of course the midpoint of the 40-day cycle, and that took 20 days. It is a reasonable expectation that if the 20-day cycle is currently beating with a wavelength of about 20 days, then the next 20-day cycle, which must be synchronous with the current 40-day cycle trough, will also occur after 20 days, in other words, on Wednesday. And so nothing very unexpected happened when price moved down last week into the 40-day cycle trough. We are expecting that 40-day cycle trough to occur. But why do I say it was particularly bearish, apart from the fact that we can see some strong red lines on our chart? The reason I say that it has turned particularly bearish is that last week we were expecting a 10-day cycle trough to form. You can see that 10-day cycle trough has now been phased on the previous Friday over here but we were expecting a bit of a bounce out of that 10-day cycle to be followed by a drop into the 40-day cycle. We received a very small bounce, a very disappointing bounce with a duration of less than one day and then of course the market turned down. That in itself is not particularly bearish. But what I would like to point out is the cycle shapes that have resulted. We know that cycles create M shapes in financial markets. Here is the M shape that has formed in the current 40-day cycle. It's a very good M shape. However, it is a bearish M shape. And that is the important point. Why do I say that it is bearish? It is bearish because the peak occurred early and because the trough that ends the wave is at a lower price level than the level at which the cycle started. Those two factors make this a bearish 40-day cycle. Now, the first 40-day cycle following a 40-week cycle trough should not be a bearish one. Bear in mind that at this cycle trough, this marks the turning point for each one of these cycles, which is indicated by means of a diamond over here. And so the 40-week cycle should be pushing upwards. The 20-week cycle should be pushing upwards. And the 80-day cycle should be pushing upwards. Those cycles should be pushing upwards, not only for the duration of time that I've drawn those arrows, but throughout this full 40-day cycle. And so three cycles longer than this 40-day cycle were influencing price to move upwards. And yet, we ended up with a bearish cycle shape. In other words, price effectively moved downwards. So why did we get a bearish shape when we had three cycles pushing upwards? The answer to that question is simply in the longer cycles. I already pointed out when we were zoomed out that the 18-month cycle is pushing downwards. The 54-month cycle and longer cycles we are not absolutely sure about. I've discussed this in previous market update videos. I have been working on the assumption that the 54-month cycle trough formed in October of last year, but that might not be true. And so we do not know with absolute certainty in what direction those longer cycles are pushing. However, price reveals to us the fact that the bearish pressure that was exerted over this 40-day cycle has overpowered the bullish pressure that we know must have been operating if this was the 40-week cycle trough. So we again need to ask ourselves, is this definitely the 40-week cycle trough? We're going to discuss that in a minute. The important thing for now, however, is that we definitely have bearish pressure in this market. 
and that is what I mean by bearish signs appearing in the market last week. The interesting thing, if I clear these marks, is that up until last week, we had not yet seen those bearish signs. This first 20-week cycle, which you can see gave us a strong move up and then a move down into the 20-week cycle trough, was in fact a bullish 20-day cycle. Here is the peak of that cycle, which occurred late in the cycle. It occurred after the halfway mark. And of course, price formed the end of the cycle move at a higher level than the level at which it started. That is, by definition, a bullish cycle shape. The 10-day cycle, which I think I discussed in last week's market update, also provided us with a bullish-shaped cycle. It also experienced a late 10-day cycle peak. The price level at which the 10-day cycle trough occurred, and you can see it has been found with the benefit of hindsight on Friday about 10 days ago, was also slightly higher than the level at which it started, again giving us a bullish 10-day cycle. It was only in last week's price action that, of course, this market revealed its bearishness, providing us with a bearish-shaped 40-day cycle. And so, if this was the 40-week cycle trough in the middle of August, and we are going to discuss that in a minute, if that was the 40-week cycle trough, and we have now experienced a bearish 40-day cycle, even though the trough of the 40-day cycle is not yet formed, it is clear it is a bearish cycle, then what are we expecting next? Well, there is no cycle reason why bullishness should suddenly come into this market. What is the next 40-day cycle going to be like? It is expected to be less bullish than the previous one. The previous one, as we've just seen, was bearish, and so we are expecting, of course, a more bearish 40-day cycle to elapse as we move into the next 40-day cycle, bringing us to the 80-day cycle trough expected towards the end of October or even early November. But now let's discuss this 40-week cycle trough. Is it possible that price is now coming into a late 40-week cycle trough? You will know that the principle of variation tells us to expect these cycle wavelengths to vary. When performing a Hearst Cycles analysis, we never focus on a single cycle. The process of performing a phasing analysis is a complex puzzle involving the identification of the trough positions of all the cycles. And so simply measuring the number of bars that elapsed into a potential cycle trough is not sufficient for us to actually declare that as the correct position for the cycle trough. We need to solve the complex puzzle of where all the shorter cycle troughs fit into that pattern. And so if we assume that the 40-week cycle is only forming a trough now, that would mean that 347 days have elapsed since the trough in October of last year. That's a very long 40-week cycle because the average length of a 40-week cycle discovered by Hearst 50 years ago was 272 days. And so if the 40-week cycle is only forming a trough now, it would already be 75 days late. A full cycles analysis involves solving the complex puzzle of where all the shorter cycle troughs have formed, but a very simple rule of thumb that I use when performing an analysis and considering whether it is possible that a cycle trough is forming now is to go back to the halfway point because of the harmonic ratio of 2 to 1 between most of cycles in Hearst's nominal model. There is certainly a 2 to 1 harmonic ratio between the 20-week cycle and the 40-week cycle, and so if we divide 347 days in half, we end up with about 173 days. If we go back to 173 days, we ask ourselves whether the 20-week cycle trough could have formed that late. You will notice that the 20-week cycle trough in fact formed not very long before that over here. As mentioned in previous videos, that was a long 20-week cycle at 151 days. The average length of a 20-week cycle is 136 days, and so this was in itself a long 20-week cycle. It is more likely that the next 20-week cycle trough, which would also be the synchronous 40-week cycle trough, occurred at about 302 days, in other words, double the length, assuming the 20-week cycle keeps beating with the same wavelength. 302 days would bring us to this date over here on the 11th of August of this year. Just a few days later, in fact, 
About a week later, the 40-week cycle trough that we have been considering formed. That very quick check makes it more likely that the 40-week cycle did in fact form in the middle of August and is not forming now. But to play devil's advocate and delve a little deeper into this, you might remember that a few weeks ago we were considering an alternate analysis where the 40-week cycle trough was considered to have formed about over here in the middle of July, which made this cycle trough over here only 40 days and the trough that is forming now 80 days. Let's take a quick look at that analysis. Here it is and if you would like to understand more details about this analysis I would encourage you to go back several weeks in the market updates about the S&P 500 to understand why this slightly unusual position for the 40-week cycle is indeed a possible one. The important thing about this analysis is that it of course means that this strong move down over here is bringing price into an 80-day cycle trough as opposed to a 40-week cycle trough. That might give some hope to those of you who are still holding on to the idea that this market is bullish. However, let's take a quick look at the cycle shapes that have formed according to this analysis. Here is the M shape of the 80-day cycle according to this analysis. And as you can see, it is a bearish M shape. So just as the situation with the 40-week cycle in the middle of August warns us to expect continued bearishness, this bearish 80-day cycle, if this is in fact the correct analysis, does exactly the same thing. Although the trough that is forming now, or should be forming very soon, is going to be a higher magnitude cycle trough, in other words an 80-day cycle trough as opposed to a 40-day cycle trough, the picture is nevertheless bearish because the previous 80-day cycle, according to this analysis, has been a bearish one and the next one will be expected to be even more bearish. And so switching back to my preferred analysis, which has the 40-week cycle trough over here in the middle of August. This is the analysis we've been discussing with the 40-day cycle trough expected to form now. What are we going to do? Well, we expect a 40-day cycle trough and we will monitor that situation by watching our FLDs. Here are the FLDs for the 5-day, 10-day and 20-day cycles. We would expect price to cross through each one of these FLDs as it bounces out of the 40-day cycle. However, each one of these FLDs is going to provide a testing point, if you like. As price approaches the FLD, we're going to watch carefully. We would expect price to cross above the 20-day cycle FLD, but in a bearish market, it might fail to do so. And so as price approaches each one of these FLDs, we are going to be watching very carefully to monitor the situation. If we get a stronger bounce than seems likely out of a 40-day cycle trough, then we might go back to considering the possibility that this is in fact an 80-day cycle trough that is forming now and we could expect a bigger bounce. Nevertheless, the overall mood of this market has definitely shown us that the markets are turning bearish and we need to stay on our toes to avoid getting trapped by a bounce out of this cycle trough that is forming now and bear in mind the fact that we have a looming 18-month cycle trough occurring early next year and it is likely that the longer cycles have turned down and we are in for some bearish price action. I do hope you found this market update useful and interesting. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments below the video or join us on our Hearst Cycles Discord server.